Good morning and welcome to St. Mary's Online, our live streamed worship service for Sunday the 27th of September. Uh, as you can see, my name's Ellis, I'm the vicar at St. Mary's. It's a pleasure to welcome you this morning, uh, or it may not be morning when you're picking up this video. Such is the joy of being able to connect with you wherever you are uh, through the internet. We are live uh, this morning. It's just me uh, uh, today. We've got some uh, pre-recorded videos uh, to uh, help us through the service in terms of singing and music and prayers and our Bible reading. Um, so you'll be seeing from others uh, of the church membership this morning. Um, but if you are watching live and I can see that a good number already are, then I would love for you to participate in our service by using the comments either on Facebook or YouTube to uh, send messages and also to reflect on our theme of curiosity and uh, the story that we're picking from the Bible this morning where Jesus encounters a man called Zacchaeus who is so curious about Jesus that he climbs a tree to get a closer look. You can find that reading in Luke's Gospel, chapter 19. So if you've got a Bible uh, as you're watching, grab it. Here's mine um, and have a have a look for Luke chapter 19 and the story of Jesus and Zacchaeus. And uh, we'll be reflecting on that and using it in our prayers too later. And um, the code that's on the screen uh, just down oh, here is a QR code and you can scan that with a smartphone. Uh, it will appear later in our service too. And it'll take you to our giving page. Uh, obviously, not meeting in person means that we can't uh, pass a pot around, uh, but you can still uh, donate to the life and ministry of St. Mary's Spring Grove uh, that way, or uh, the web link you may have already um, typed into the internet, and that'll take you to our giving page as well, uh, with details of how you can become a regular giver too. Um, but one thing that we can give to God as we gather is our worship and our praise for all that God is and for all that God has done. And so we're having going to have three songs at the beginning of our service this morning uh, to, and to help us enter into worship. The first one is uh, who put the colours in the rainbow? So we praise God for his gifts in creation, creating animals and things that we can uh, see that are beautiful and we use those to worship him too. And then uh, the second song is more about who God is. It's a song called Indescribable, uh, and it relates to one of our Bible readings this morning. And last week, if you were with us, you'll remember that we looked at the story of when Jesus calmed the storm and he was in the boat with the disciples and calmed a storm. And it reminded me of a song uh, that I only got to know last year, Raise a Hallelujah. And the chorus of that song we sing, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm, that even when life is tough and boy, is life tough. We can worship God uh, because he is good. He is with us. He is for us. And so we're going to spend some time now this morning in sung worship. So who put the colours in the rainbow? Who put the colours in the rainbow? Who put the salt into the sea? Well done. 
From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea Creations revealing your majesty From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful, untamable, all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim you are amazing, Lord. Who has told every lightning bolt where it should go? Or seen heavenly storehouses laid under snow? Who imagined the sun and gave source to its light? Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of life. None can fathom, indescribable, uncontainable. We place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. It can feel quite strange sitting on your sofa or in your house watching a video where someone is worshipping God and it can feel a bit strange and it can take a bit of courage to actually join in and sing out yourself. But don't be a bystander. Don't be a watcher of worship. Be a worshipper. We're going to sing one more song now. It's Raise a Hallelujah. And it might take a bit of courage this morning. You might be feeling a bit down in the dumps, a bit distant from this amazing, uh, uncontainable, untamable God. But God is so close. God is so close. He's closer than you can imagine. He knows you inside out and he loves you. And when we raise a hallelujah, we return in worship to God, all that he has planted in us by his spirit. So be brave. It might feel weird. Zacchaeus probably felt weird climbing a tree to get a look of Jesus. But don't be a bystander. 
lean in, take a big breath and let's worship God together. And you might not know this song, but it's very repetitive. So uh, you will get the hang of it. Give it a go. Raise a hallelujah.
Jesus, we thank you that you are alive, that by your cross and resurrection you have defeated the power of death, that by your Holy Spirit, the same strength that raised you from the grave lives in us, that you are calm in the storm, and that you are mighty to save. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. Help us to become more like you as we try to follow you. Amen. Amen. It's great to see uh, in the comments that people are uh, worshipping along at home. Yvonne and John say louder and louder, the king is alive. Uh, Heidi says that all, all the family are singing along and Jackie's trying too. So brilliant for trying. Uh, nice microphone emoji there. Uh, we're going to look at our Bible readings now. Um, I got on my bike to uh, visit some people to record our Old Testament reading, which comes from the book of Job. And, you know, we're looking at curiosity this month. And uh, this uh, question mark is still in my, in my room. And uh, lots of questions uh, that God asks Job in the first reading. So uh, take it away. I think the first person we're going to hear from is Lorraine. See if you can spot some people you know in this. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me if you understand. Who marked out its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and the angels shouted for joy. Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place? Then it might take the earth by its edges and shake the wicked out of it. Have you seen the gates of the deepest darkness? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth? Tell me if you know all of this. Does the rain have a father? Who fathers the drops of dew? From whose womb comes the ice? Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens? When the waters become hard as stone, when the surface of the deep is frozen. Do you hunt the prey for the lioness and satisfy the hunger of the lions while they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in a thicket? Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you watch when the doe bears her fawn? Do you give the horse its strength or clothe its neck with a flowing mane? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be indeed. And our gospel reading this morning is taken from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 8. And the words will appear on the screen and I'm going to read them now. Then Jesus entered and walked through Jericho. There was a man there, his name Zacchaeus, the head tax man and quite rich. He wanted desperately to see Jesus but the crowd was in his way. He was a short man and couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran on ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus when he came by. When Jesus got to the tree, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus scrambled out of the tree, hardly believing his good luck delighted to take Jesus home with him. Everyone who saw the incident was indignant and grumped, what business does he have getting cosy with this crook? Zacchaeus just stood there, a little stunned. He stammered apologetically, Master, I give away half my income to the poor, and if I'm caught cheating, I pay four times the damages. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So 
So I'm going to ask those who are watching live in the comments to give your own response to our Bible readings this morning. First, God's answer to Job. You might know Job, the character in uh, the Old Testament who loses everything, who suffers greatly and who asks God, why is this happening to me? Because Job was a righteous man. And God's answer comes in the form of lots of questions, questions that we uh, sort of sang in our um, indescribable. Who's seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow? Who put the, uh, the dawn in its place? The, 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 who knows when the mountain goats give birth? Big questions that are basically one question. Who do you think I am? Maybe another question. Who do you think you are? Big searching, curious questions. Love you to respond to that in the comments. And also the story of Jesus and Zacchaeus. What stood out to you in the telling of it this morning? Which I took from the message version of the Bible. You might have a different version in front of you. Are there words or verses that stand out? So do uh, write those in the comments while I... Let's give a few minutes of reflection on the passages. Curiosity is a powerful thing. Um, I wonder if you've been thinking about that word as we've introduced it as a theme and as a value that we want to grow in at St Mary's Spring Grove. Uh, in fact, let me share with you a little video that I was sent um, actually earlier in the year when we were planning these topics by Dave. Now, uh, Dave lives in uh, Windsor, um, but Dave's in-laws, Pauline and Ken, worship at St. Luke's. And um, Dave and his wife Emma's church haven't had online services during the lockdown, so they started watching ours. Now, Dave is a, is a clever guy and has a bit of a talent for uh, magic. And so he sent me this uh, as a, a, a reflection on the theme, a theme of curiosity. You might enjoy this. Have a little look. I was talking with Ellis the other day about curiosity being important to help you explore God's word. Now, I was being curious. I found this in the shed, just a metal circle. And I was curious. I wondered, can a circle be a different shape? Yes, it can. So there you go. Curiosity, turning circles into squares yeah i'm seeing uh fee who's backstage uh with me today giving a round of applause i'm sure it will turn up in the comments too that was impressive wasn't it can a circle become a square or can a tax collector become a follower of jesus can a swindler and a cheat be able to live in uh, a righteous way a generous way can Jesus transform lives? Well, uh, if we look at the story, uh, yes, he can. He can. But it, he couldn't transform Zacchaeus's life on that day in Jericho without first Zacchaeus showing some curiosity. And it was curiosity that led him to um, climb a, a sycamore fig tree to get a closer look at Jesus as he passed through the town. See, curiosity leads us to do things. It leads us into action. And that's why um, I think it's a good value for us to have. As I said earlier, we don't want a church of bystanders. We don't want to be passive about the needs of the world and our community. We want to be active followers of Jesus. And sometimes we need a good dose of curiosity to take action. We need to have our eyes open uh, wide and our senses attuned to the needs of the world. Zacchaeus was curious and the curiosity led him up the tree. Jesus, he had a powerful encounter with Jesus who called him down out of the tree and said, I'm coming to your house today. He says, uh, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. So curiosity led to encounter, which led 
to action. Zacchaeus had to come down out of the tree. I wonder if you need to come down out of the tree. I wonder if I need to come down out of the tree. There's some uh, distance created by climbing the tree. There's some protection. Uh, Zacchaeus, remember, was a tax collector. Tax collectors weren't very popular people in uh, the, the first century. Uh, uh, they're not very popular people in the 21st century. But Zacchaeus had to uh, come down out of the tree, out of that place of security. And then Jesus led him into action. Uh, the response to Jesus made Zacchaeus say, look, half of my possessions I will give to the poor. And if I've defrauded anyone or anything, I will pay back four times as much. So following Jesus isn't about being a bystander. It isn't about um, the the it, it isn't about being a bystander. It's about taking action. It's about generosity. It's about responding to Jesus, not just uh, by singing songs or saying prayers, but about taking action that will uh, benefit the people and the world around us. Um, so let's show curiosity and let's let that curiosity lead us into action. It's going to put up some comments that have come through uh, while I've been speaking. Uh, Linda says, am I like one of the crowd? Do I get in the way of other people's curiosity? Do I unfairly judge who Jesus will welcome? Lord, help me to be open to his work in mine and other people's lives. And Heidi says that uh, in her house, they've been thinking about Job. Isn't God's answer basically, you just can't understand? Yeah, I think in Job's, in the passage in Job, there's a lot that's hard to understand. But one thing we can come to at the point of believing is that we are not God. We are not trying to be God in our vision. We're trying to become more like Jesus. But God is God and we are us. And that leads us uh, again into action, to the action of repentance, into the action of um, discipleship, in the action of worship, which is saying, God, you are God. And I am not. And then he says, we shouldn't write anyone off. Yeah, we shouldn't write anyone off. Jesus was friends with all the wrong kinds of people. We should be friends with all the wrong kinds of people too. So uh, as we think about curiosity, as we think about taking action, and thank you so much to Lorraine and Linda and Victoria and Alexander and Steve uh, for contributing the reading and taking on the challenge of being the voice of God. Uh, as we think about that, God wants to uh, bring us to our knees, uh, to hit the ground kneeling uh, before we go and take action and change the world around us. So we're going to pray. Um, and this morning, Fee is leading us in our prayers, um, which were recorded earlier in the week, but built on that theme of curiosity and that story of Jesus and Zacchaeus. So let's pray. Hello. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Ellis introduced the idea of praying with our eyes open and, and focusing on something to um, to encourage our prayers. And this morning, I've um, got the pleasure of using an image created for me by Jane, one of our worshippers over at St. Luke's. Um, and it's a great picture of uh, Zacchaeus in a tree, and it will it will provide the basis for our prayers this morning. So let me share this image with you. And here we have the fabulous image of a sycamore tree. And if I take the tree off here, let me see, we've got a face and the face is a Zacchaeus. Um, but it's missing some features. So as I add the features, we're going to pray around that particular feature. Uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you that we can experience the wonders of your world through our senses. And that like Zacchaeus, we can use our senses to know you more and become more like you day by day. Let us not stay where we are and as we are, but let us, like Zacchaeus, through your spirit, explore ways of seeing, hearing and knowing you more clearly. Let me give Zacchaeus some eyes. There we go. Lord, we pray for those that feel stuck in a faceless crowd. 
that can't see our way through this morning. We pray for those that can't see you through the darkness, that through us you might shine your light of hope. We pray for those trying to plan a way through this current time of what feels like chaos, for those in positions of governance in all sectors of our society, all those with responsibility for viewing the way forward, that you would give them wisdom to see the path ahead and plan with integrity and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let me give Zacchaeus his ears. Lord, we pray for those overwhelmed by the endless noise of our society, for those battling with endless noise inside their heads, noise which brings anxiety and depression. We pray, Lord, that they might hear your whisper of peace, that you bring some moments of stillness and beauty. We also pray for those for whom this time brings too much silence, that people who feel lonely or isolated would know your comfort Help us to use our ears to listen well to those around us, be it our children after a busy day of work or a neighbour who has no one else to talk to. Help us to hear you when listening to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Skips the kiss, his nose. Maybe think of some lovely scent you've smelt recently might be perfume, some aromatherapy, the smell of freshly baked bread or the scent of a rose. Lord, help us to be your beautiful aroma in this world. We pray that through our lives becoming more Christ-like, people can experience the scent of you and want to come closer to find out more about you. Let the scent of you flow through us and out into our communities, our workplaces, our families and our world. We pray for Christian aid agencies working around the world, particularly at this time of coronavirus, and pray that this aroma of your love, peace and righteousness might be known in areas broken apart by the stench of corruption, violence and division. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Zacchaeus can now have a mouth. Words are powerful and can be used to build people up, but equally to tear them down. Lord, we pray for those struggling today because of experiencing harsh or demoralising words. Those perhaps dealing with forms of domestic abuse or bullying, or those in leadership roles dealing with seemingly endless criticism. Let us be the people that seek to build others up, that realise the value of kind and encouraging words. We pray that Christian leaders throughout the world will be empowered by your spirit to speak words of peace, wisdom and reconciliation. Give us the words we need to speak of your comfort and hope in the face of grief, fear and uncertainty. Remind us that you are our strength and fortress at this time. Finally, in quiet, let's pray for a current situation that really needs the blessing of Christ's healing words of peace and love at the moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's conclude our prayers by praying with confidence the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you to Fee for leading us in prayer and to Jane for uh, contributing that amazing uh, picture of Zacchaeus. I think it just speaks of uh, coming together in partnership, of collaborating in worship, of being 
the church, even though we are uh, like satellites, all distance in our homes in these online services. We are a people of God's choosing who are uh, together and united by Jesus. And thanks to everyone else who's contributed uh, in the comments and uh, to our worship in other ways. Um, the rest of today, there's going to be a service at 1130 at St. Mary's. It's a fourth Sunday family service for families with children. And in the most part, people have booked their places at that service. And uh, it's going to be led by Heidi and the team. And I, I won't be there because I'll be at St. Luke's at the same time for a communion service. And that is now fully booked too. Um, but if you can't make either of those, then do join us on Zoom at 3 p.m. for the after Zoom tea. Uh, and we would love to have a cup of uh, tea uh, together, even as we're all on Zoom. Um, details of those services and the links that you need for Zoom are all on the St Mary's website. And two more things from me. So one is just to tell you that uh, we want to run a course called the Bereavement Journey in November mainly, uh, Monday evenings at 8 p.m. Um, in November uh, and going until the 7th of December. So it starts on the 2nd and it's a six week course looking at the bereavement journey and the grief process. And it's uh, gonna be a small group uh, course uh, online and uh, for anyone who's carrying a bereavement and would like to journey through that with others um, and with some good teaching uh, that the course provides. So if that appeals to you, if that's something that will be um, helpful to you in this season, then do please get in touch uh, through the parish office or myself and book a place on that course. And then the last thing is to say that on the 18th of October, we're having an APCM, an annual parochial council church meeting uh, online again because of um, the difficulty we'll have in having everybody distanced and in person. Um, so that's going to be on Zoom on Sunday, the 18th of October. Um, and it's at that meeting that we elect our church wardens and our PCC and members of the Deanery Synod this year. If uh, you'd like to have an informal chat about coming onto the PCC, uh, which is the group of people that meet regularly about monthly to uh, govern and, and make decisions about the life of our church. If you would like to make a contribution to that uh, and join the PCC, then do get in touch with me for a chat. Uh, I'd love to talk to you more about that. Uh, the Deanery Synod happens at a wider level in Hounslow and all the churches coming together, both the clergy and lay people, um, to do the same sort of things. Uh, so uh, with either of those roles, do uh, be in touch. So let's, uh, we're going to sing our final hymn in a moment, um, which is, uh, again, begins with a question. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? But before we do, let's pause and receive God's blessing. God, thank you for our time together uh, online this morning. Thank you for the worship, for the prayers, for the truth of your word and for the fellowship that we have through Jesus. Give us strength for the week ahead. Go before us, protect us, give us all that we need to be your people in a difficult time and in a needy world. And may the peace of God, which passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We sing our final song. Will you come and follow me? <laughs>